happened in Charlotte. He and Pan-Africanist Congress led um, a, a demonstration, Sorry. a march of people to come to the police station to turn in their pass books. That it was necessary for all Africans who lived in, in South Africa to carry passes, uh, identification passes. And uh, in fact, it was a crime to be caught without one. And it was a humiliating thing done to the people who actually own the land here. So the Pan-Africanist Congress uh, organized uh, a day uh, to take back, take the passes uh, uh, and turn them into the police station. But Sharpville uh, is the one that got really well known because the police opened fire mm -hmm. on the honor marches. I think killed 60 people. Was it 60 people who they killed? Uh, and it's been referred to as the Sharpville Massacre people who didn't know anything about South Africa or the conditions of our people before then, many of them came aware as a consequence of Sharpville. Wow. That's This is the Mandela house. This is the house that AMC has done. The next kitchen here. And next to the toilet. Next to the toilet. And the bedroom next to the toilet. The bedroom, yeah. This is, is this so is. So the, this the, side, the, the is where they, 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 they build for themselves. They, they built this they for, themselves. for themselves. Yeah. This, this oh, is these. additional right here. Additional, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this is the million houses they promised to keep. Yes. I mean, from, from here. From here. From here. Yes. This is the people that have this. Well, let's show these in London. They've done an incredible job. I mean, I'm saying, man, you got to be more people when they, they, they sell some liquor here, right. you don't want people to sell liquor in their houses. Right. Right. When they hear that you are selling liquor, right. they are coming and they took your liquor, right. all of them. Right. They are going to close the liquor. They right. take my liquor and right. my fridge and all those things. Take they your take fridge it. also. All those things. Glasses, yeah. well, all those things to take yeah. it. Are there jobs for the people? Is there work for the people? No work. No work for the No work. Like this one. This man is it's a house father. I'm a house father. Many people. Uh, like that one. It's a house father. It doesn't work. That one is a house father. It doesn't work. That one is not good. Many people. Yeah. That one is not a father's house. That one. One, two, three, three houses. Not good. Father's house. Are you going to organize? We don't know to organize, but like today, I was from Fanabel Park to look some other jobs. Well, the revolution is not finished. Though. You know that? Yeah. It's not finished. Yeah. It's not finished. He's related to the Africa. He was saying that up here, these are people going to the dump and they're looking for food. Mm -hmm. You know? So they're looking for food. This is, this is what they will eat. Shit is fucked up, man. There's a big ass garbage dump over here. The damn dumpster come in, dump the damn garbage, and people trying to find some shit to eat. My man Della and his phony ass friends eating lavish. Digging through fucking trash, man. Through fucking trash. Man, revolution is the only damn answer.
She lives here. She doesn't have electricity. What's the matter, ma'am? She doesn't wear it. She doesn't wear it. She doesn't wear it. So she stays here with his, with his uh, husband. They don't wear both of them. So did you ma'am? I can go on water, I know that you guys need to open my family. So he said his husband, he sometimes go to the houses where the whites live and go to do some gardens to have some 40 rands or 30 rands to come and buy a food for government <laughs> So she said uh, the, the, the food the trial is for them. So these people those people are working for NC. They've took some other things inside. They go to sell them. So they leave them with that uh, So they've taken part of the plumbing or something. Uh, they've taken part of it and they've gone to sell yeah. it. And they did leave them yes. with the shell. Yeah, Ask them what do they see if, as the future? What do they see are for the future? Are for future Lina Halaweta Ima? Sanbonani, Injani, Sivagashile. Oh, they like to know you, these people. They like to know your name. Oh, yeah. I'm Omar Lewis. And for us, this is the first time coming home. Okay. So we come to see our sisters and brothers. Okay. okay. Where are you staying? Uh, where am I staying? For the Park. Okay. Yeah. For a while. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. She's leaving today. They're okay. leaving today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go back to London. Okay. So it's just, it's good to be home. And uh, like I said, for some of us, it's the first time being here. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then you want to see how we are staying here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can go back and tell you have you have sisters and brothers and cousins and family in okay. America and other places, and we want to tell them how you're doing. Say so we saw our sister. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. and how are you, sisters? How are you doing? No, oh, we are not working, we are unemployed, we are just sitting here doing nothing. Yeah. What do you see for the future? Hey, it's difficult without money. Yeah. Mm. Do, but do you see money, employment um, in the future? Do you Can you anticipate anything like that? Uh, no, you can't? Mm. And what would happen with him then? Who? Oh. Yeah. Him and all the other children. Uh, the young father support him. Yeah, but and they are working. Yeah. Yeah. So is there a future for him? Not yet. Not yet. Mm -hmm. So what do we have to do to make a future? You must employ our, uh, their parents if you have a chance. But uh, I thought that's what the ANC was all about. 
Okay. No? <laughs> <laughs> no. 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 Because the whites still own the land, don't they? The whites still own 87% of the land here. And they have all the wealth. Is that true? Yes, it's true. The whites own 87% of the land oh, in South Africa. Yeah, I, I can't agree with you. Yeah. But these are suffering. We are suffering. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And they still have everything. We have nothing. Mm, yeah. yeah. It's like this all over the world yeah. with Africans. Mm -hmm. campaign of passport, you know? yeah. And now, Sobukwe has a date, had a date, in, to start, you know, with this campaign. Even all their executive members couldn't know when this will occur. He said the date was his and he's a rope, see? And when he started it, and he called us, we never hesitated. Because during this short period, in this short period, we were with him. He said to us, we are going to begin this campaign. And I think when I look at you, when I look at you as my executive, some of you will not go up that mountain. They will fall down. It is only then that those few who are left, the struggle will carry on. That was so book himself. Uh, this man here, when we started this campaign, we used to go with a racket car. It would break on the way. 
if you sleep anywhere in the dongas or in the bushes. But the following day, he will say, we must go to church. We must go to church and ask those people to support our struggle. That's what he used to do. Now, can I read something from you? Certainly. That's right. Sobukwe put the Africanist case to ANC members during their 1958 uh, Transvaal Congress. The next day, he was banned from the Congress. In 1960, it was the turning point in liberation politics. The Pan-Africanist Congress, which broke away under Robert Zubwe from ANC, organized a protest against the past laws that culminated in the police shooting of 69 people. It shoved south to Johannesburg on the 21st March 1960. Now, it was a pity that this man died because he had a, 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 a long protected plan to free this country. If you are still living, you, ANC, would not be here because he was even feared by the boys. Hence, when he completed his three years, when he completed his years, they kept him for further seven years in jail without trying. What is that? That meant that they were afraid of this man. Uh, thank you so much. Yes, uh, thank you so much. Thank yes. you so much. Thank yes. you so much. Yes. Yes. So, much. Yes. Yes. so Bukwe, he was he was our leader also. Yes. Yeah, he was our leader also. He was a great man. He was a great man. And. Uh, <laughs> In the spirit of uh, Nkroma and Patrice Lumumba, oh, yes, you know, yes, um, yes, yes. yeah, he was a great man and, and um, it set the foundation for the, the PAC that uh, attracted me yes. to it and made it possible. We worked for more than 30 years with the PAC yes. and, and um, uh, throughout the U.S. We worked with them in, in London, in England. And because uh, again, it was the principal thing to do. It was principal. And uh, there are some people uh, who claim friendship with PAC. And even while they were claiming friendship with PAC, they were claiming friendship with ANC. And I didn't understand how you could be friends with both ANC and PAC. <laughs> when he was uh, ultimately released.
Mr. Shadu, let me ask the deputy to speak. We will give them the opportunity to speak with the question. Comrades, now. On behalf of the All African Peoples Revolutionary Party, I thank you for this opportunity to express our solidarity with the Pan Africanist Congress of Bethania. And most importantly, our relationship was built on the long standing relationship of Kwame Dred, one of our dearest members. This work that dates back to the late 1960s. We would like to thank the PAC for their consistent contribution to the political education of our people. The presentations of your party bulletins, the writings of your party bulletins, have lent to the education of not only our members, but those that we have involved ourselves with. We thank the PAC for the consistent contributions they have made in assisting us and others with the organizing of African Liberation Day. We would like to thank you, the PAC, for this opportunity to observe your party congress. We find that this is an important occasion and we truly value this because we are at a point where we are studying and organizing to hold our very first party congress. So the information I'm able to gather here will be vital to us as an organization. We hope to be able to observe and get a better understanding of democracy, how you employ democracy in the practice of your Congress. We hope to gain a better understanding as we observe how you are involved in ideological struggles with your party Congress. We hope to learn from your efforts to clarify political lives. We hope to learn from your efforts in terms of gaining a better understanding of tactical and strategical efforts and decisions. Down with the United Snakes of America, down. down! Down with the United Snakes of America, down! down. He is the left! He is Africa! He is the left! Comrade Wamachi, we do agree on that arrangement. I am going to ask you to sing, sing a huge revolutionary song in welcome.
of our political ancestors and our succeeding generations. We have remained on this road without deviating, despite the trials, stipulations, and frustrations of politics in non-racial, multicultural South Africa. We are African nationalists that will certainly make African nationalists of all ages feel proud of us.
Die Speaker, Damen und Herren, kommen in das Haus, die Sanger von Kumil Komali, Yachi Keller. Kumil Komali has a long history. I do not want to believe a point, I want to be brief, was we do want to give him time to speak to us. He was born in 1941, he is a very young person. That's <laughs> where he was born in St. Petersburg. Then he was born as Joseph Wala. I don't know when he changed his name, but his name was changed. He is now Kongre Komali Yachitela. He is currently the international leader of the Uhuru movement, which has branches all over the world overseas, in the Caribbean, Europe, and also in Africa. He is the chairman also of the African People's Socialist Party and the founder member of the Benin Spear newspaper which is the only independent general of the Black Freedom Movement in the United States of America. Comrade Yachitela is an activist. He has been involved in a number of campaigns which sought to him being arrested and serving two years in prison. He was one of the leaders of the U.S. who have raised the question of reparations at the time when he was no longer fashionable to speak about reparations. He has spoken and has been invited to speak at the United Nations on a number of issues and topics. One such important issue was on the anniversary of the death, passing away of Comrade Robert Malani Sosobu. Comrade Tepsikala has a long relationship with the PAC. He has met Comrade Tupin when Comrade Tupin went overseas. He also met Comrade Nyati Pokeda when Comrade Nancy Okeda was also overseas. Comrades, Comrade President and the Deputy, we are honored today to have in our midst the presence of Comrade Omari Yachitela. I hereby ask him to speak to us. Kamalako, that is all kids know where the cobble is there. Sit to Munyaka Bana when you tire, but the mother figure of the Pesha, and the woman knew what one would have seen them all. President Ohopa, Secretary General Tani Factor, Comrade Deputy President Fako. The national, the seen National Executive Council of the Pan African Congress of Azania, delegates, guests, brothers and sisters, E relate to E Africa. E Africa. E Africa. I bring you greetings. From the Central Committee of the African People's Socialist Party, from its mass organizations and membership, from our African brothers and sisters in the diaspora, especially those from the United States and London, Uhuru. Uhuru, Uhuru is the greeting of our party and movement is a greeting that was made popular by the Kenyan Land Freedom Army and Didan Kimati, the Kenyan Land Freedom Army popularly known as Mao Mao. Uhuru, of course, is Swahili for freedom. And so in our party, we greet each other with this word. You should call our office any place in the world you be greeted with the word Uhuru. And we say Uhuru because we believe that freedom should be on the minds of African people 24 hours 
a day. Uhuru. Uhuru. A few days ago, I talked to someone from the South African press. And they asked me, why was I here to be with the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania at this incredibly significant Congress? I didn't think about it at the time, but I should have asked the white woman why she was here. Because <laughs> it seems to me I have more right to be here than she does. Yeah. <laughs> But I'll tell you why I'm here. I'm here in part because we are a party of principle. And because we've worked with the pan Africanist Congress of Azania for more than 35 years. And we've worked, we've worked with this organization in an uncompromising fashion. Even when it was popular, in certain places in the United States for organizations to claim they couldn't decide who they should support. <laughs> we had to support the pan Africanist Congress of Azania because we saw, we witnessed the African National Congress give away our occupied Azania <laughs>
to protect the status quo, the system that is in existence, as it was the responsibility of the apartheid state to protect the status quo, it is the responsibility of the settler neocolonial state to protect the status quo. People who have spoken before me have talked about what this status quo is. It is a status quo where 10 or more percent of the population still own and control 87 percent of the land. So that this handful of white people here in our country own and control a land, a territory that is four times larger than these, is than, than, than the United Kingdom and Northern Ireland combined. Something is wrong with that. Something is wrong with that. Sisters and brothers, I want to be clear that when I speak, I do speak as the chairman of the African People's Socialist Party. I want to say that in the event that there are representatives of the South African media here, and I have to say that I am responsible for my statements and not others in the panel of the Chinese of Zania. It's necessary to say this because we have had an analysis of the reality here in Occupy Zania for a long time. And we have understood for a long time that the fundamental question here is land. And now that you have a neo-colonial separate state, its responsibility is to maintain the status quo. And it will maintain the status quo by any means necessary. And one of the means by which it maintains the status quo is the electoral process itself. It's the electoral process itself. And so, uh, from my perspective and the spectral perspective of our party, while it is important to use, to take advantage of any possibility of capturing political power, we say that a system that is established for the protection of the system itself will not easily allow for a revolutionary organization to ascend the political power. The revolution in Occupy Zania has not been completed. Murdered at least 27 members of the 
Light Panther Party that year, arresting more than 700, and on December 4th, 1969, while he was sleeping in his bed, murdered Fred Hampton, who was the chapter, the, the leader of the Black Panther Party in, in uh, Illinois. And now, in the United States, after struggles led by black liberals, they created a situation that called for the end of segregation. In other words, in the United States, apartheid was defeated a long time ago. And we were hearing messages that our brothers and sisters in South Africa, occupied Zania, were fighting for the end of segregation here. I said, I don't believe that. <laughs> That's insane. Because when you talk about segregation or apartheid, we are only talking about the form that the oppressive state takes while it expropriates the value that is created by African workers, while it takes our land. And so they set up a system now where they give us the right to vote, and even when we vote, the vote doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Tashi 
your intestines. And it doesn't have to do any work. And no matter the fact that it doesn't do any work, off your work, your labor, what you eat, it continues to grow bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You cannot talk this tapeworm out of leaving your intestines. You can't sing freedom songs to get it to leave. You can't go to the ballot and vote to make it leave. Because if it leaves, it dies. And this is the nature of imperialism. This is the nature of international white power. It has constructed itself of the misery and the theft of the resources of the peoples of the world. And all over the world, people are demanding Uhuru. People are demanding freedom from one part of the world of the world to another. And it is this crisis of transformation of people struggling for freedom that has made it necessary for George Bush to try and mobilize a military force that would bring back direct white power, direct colonial rule over the peoples of the world. This is what we are confronted with. This Congress occurs within the context of an imperialism in crisis. And this is one of the reasons that it is so important. And this is one of the reasons why we have to advance the revolution that will raise up the African working class aligned with the poor peasantry from its position of misery and poverty to its status, its historically required status as a new ruling class. That's why it is necessary. I uh, want to say that the African National Congress hasn't ever had to fight alone. Yeah. as we have fought alone. Yeah. I watched them in the 60s, during the time when the Soviet Union declared that there were only six authentic revolutionary organizations in Africa. And the ANC was one of them. The PNC, the PAC was not one of them. They said there were only six authentic revolutionary organizations. And they gave them money. They gave them organizational training. They gave them military training. They gave them ideological training. <laughs> and they had a powerful international media that they used to win favor and friendship and resources for the African National Congress all over the world. All over the world. And now that the, that the oh yes they did. And now that the Af African National Congress, uh, after Polko and Afla, and, and PAC has done so much work to, to, to start the crises that made it necessary for imperialism here to turn over the administration of the, of the, of the oppressive system uh, to a neo-colonial party. And that's what has happened. The ANC has been given the responsibility of administering an oppressive system, uh, and a, a system that speaks to the needs and aspirations of imperialist power all over the world. That is, that is what it does. It, it is its administrator. The question before us is when will we, those of us who are African internationalists, those of us who recognize that there is one Africa, one African people that must be united in order for Africa to be free, when will we stop fighting alone? Here are the choices that we are faced with. We are faced with the question of whether we are in Occupy Zambia. Are we fighting to make another Kenya? Are we fighting to do another Uganda, where black people are apparently in power, but the masses of our people suffer the worst kind of misery? I say no. I say that we have to unite Africans all around the world. But it is not enough simply to unite. We must unite under the leadership of the African working class and poor peasantry as manifested in their incredible organizations. So when I come here, I have to come to the PAC. Don't tell me about the fact that they only got this percentage uh, in an election. What the hell do I care about an election? I'm not interested in an election. I'm interested in I heard references made to the Constitution that, that law is simply the opinion of the ruling class. <laughs> anything, anything that challenges monopoly of power and violence in the hands of the ruling class is illegal. 
So, you'll pardon me if I make a distinction between what is written on a piece of paper, whether in America or Occupy Lasagna, and the actual conditions of existence that our people are confronted with here. I have been to the squatters' camps. I have talked to the people in Soweto. I have talked to our impoverished masses who are living in one of the so-called 1.5 million, what they call houses, created by the ANC. I saw Mackey uh, on television boasting about what he's done for our people with these houses. If the houses are so wonderful, why doesn't Mackey move into them? It is not in the heads 
of the African working class. <laughs> it is our responsibility to change that. I'm hoping that we can enter into new relationships that demand a more principled stand by each of us. By each of us. I have a responsibility to support an African Congress design. We have never quibbled about that question. Doesn't matter that the ANC is in power. You don't switch forces now that the ANC is in power. Doesn't matter if we stand for principle. We are here because we see the future requires a unified Africa and the, re and the, and, and the recapture of our land. We recognize that. We are hoping for more than 20 years now. In the African People's Socialist Party, and I've talked to Comrade Mokela and uh, Uncle Zeth about this, that for more than 20 years now, we've worked to build what we call the African Socialist International, where African socialists all around the world who recognize that the future of African people is here, with a liberated, unified Africa, that we should work together to build a single revolutionary organization that can fight for the liberation of Africa everywhere on earth. When we talk about the African Socialist International, I want to be clear. We're not talking about that kind of old, dead, tired Pan-Africanism that would allow folk who one day are Pan-Africanists when they're not in power, but once they go into power, they're only concerned about the new territory that they have now been allowed to administer. I, I know I'm not supposed to say this because it, it, it breaks some kinds of uh, political uh, uh, proper norms, but, but, but my organization, built the first ZAMU Solidarity Committee in North America. The African People Social Party did that. We trained them, ZAMU Cadre, how to go out among the Africans in the United States and win solidarity and support for our struggle in Zimbabwe. We did this not as some kind of sympathy, because the birthright of my children is Zimbabwe and Azania just as the birthright of your children. So this was not charity work that we did. We toured them throughout the United States. We helped them raise funds and did all this work. And then once they went to power, we can't find them anymore. And, uh, and uh, I, I, I say that uh, I am happy that uh, Comrade Mugabe uh, has made the move around the land question. I'm very excited about that. <laughs> I'm sorry he waited so long. <laughs> and, and I am trying not to be cynical in believing that he may have only done it now to save his own political hide because the masses of people in Africa and Zimbabwe were taking the land anyway. So I won't be cynical about that. But I do have a question because I read a newspaper article since I've been here. Brother and President, I hope you'll forgive me. I know it's a breach of that. I read a newspaper article since I've been here that said Comrade Mugabe was going to appear at the ANC convention. The ANC Congress. I hope that is not true. I, I, I think he should be here.
What we have to do is stake out our base among the masses of the oppressors the pan African Congress has done. And then regardless of whether anybody likes it or not, we have to strike out for the freedom of occupied Zambia in solidarity with Africa and African peoples around the world. Welcome! 